<laughs> oh man. I really don't know how to start this podcast because Jed just keeps making these cheesy little <laughs> smiles at me. Welcome back to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And we made it a year. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> in marriage. So we're actually going to break down our top four things that we learned through our first year of marriage and what has really helped and supported us. Now we've had other relationship podcasts on goal setting and actually episode like two, I think mm-hmm. was where we really introduced how we first met and stuff. And before we dive into our top four things that we've really learned throughout our first year of marriage. I do want to say just hit the subscribe if you haven't yet and ring that little bell to get little reminders of when we put a new video because we don't just talk about pain diagnoses and different things that you can do, but we also just come out with videos just on mobility exercises or stability exercises, correctives to really understand and continue to learn about your body. So I hope you don't want to miss out on those. So definitely subscribe. We made it a whole year. I guess it should be more of a congratulations to Jen for making it a whole year with me. (laughs) I can't wait until I'm one of those old men that's just like, oh, 50 years you've like survived being with me. (laughs) So one year down. Marriage. 80 to go or something like that. Yeah, but we're going to talk through just our four little tips that we've kind of learned throughout our first year of marriage and just what we've done throughout these different transitions, even within our first year to really create some support for ourselves. And I think only drawn us closer as a Definitely. as a couple. And it's been really amazing. And we really started out with kind of a bang uh, after getting married <laughs> because it was like we got married a couple of weeks later. We were packing up our apartment in Marina, heading out, like putting our stuff into storage, heading to Minnesota, and then traveling for like five months. It was like May until October, and we were going all over the country, hanging out with friends, trying to keep up with some work, trying to still find connection and be like, hey, this is like technically our honeymoon, so we need to (laughs) spend some time together too. (laughs) We don't really believe in finding this quote unquote perfect balance. Everyone talks about the balance, the work life balance, right? But it's really of like, it's a flow, it's an integration, it ebbs and flows, it moves, it changes. And so really understanding how we were going to move with those changes as we were continuing to travel was huge because we'd go stay at different people's houses. And so obviously we want to socialize with them. We want to do things, we want to explore their city. And at the same time, we have this team to also support that is helping us out to crank all this content that we got out to you guys. So it was also, okay, how are we maintaining podcasts and how are we keeping up with things? And we'd have to find studios on the fly and videographers on the fly. And it was kind of a little crazy at times. I love the the work, life and love integration (laughs) term. I know that there are still people who work, you know, nine to five jobs and your work and life are a bit more separate. But even within that, it's just like your work, you also have the work family. And how does that integrate with how you feel at home? You know, how we work and the time that we spend at work definitely impacts how we feel in the rest of life and how we show up in the rest of life. So it still is an integration in some aspects. We would sit on the plane and start to write into our calendar. Here's going to be a work block here. Here's when we're going to podcast. Here's when we're going to hang with friends. Here's when we're going to do something just for ourselves. That was crazy. And And it was great. Yeah. And it it, it still helps to today. The schedule might flex and things might change and being open to how things can change and you can still achieve all the tasks that you need to. But if you really get crushed by that expectation hangover, then, you know, that's something that you're going to need to deal with. Yeah. So learning to like not be so attached to things. And I really struggle with that because I like to kind of have the schedule I know. <laughs> and know what's going on. And if that really changes, it's just like, okay, what's the point of putting it down? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of those <laughs> pictures that has like 80 dots and then you just need to draw the line between all the dots and then it makes a picture. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's how your day is. I think that's how your average day is. It is. <laughs> It is. You help keep me a little bit more in, in a somewhat congruent line, but 
coming around to learning to allow and always have awareness of your partner. Yeah. And I think we really realized that there was kind of a tragedy in the family, real a big health scare and tragedy that brought a lot of sadness. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know. It pulled us out of our travel. We were supposed to end up in Minnesota and we immediately came back to California. You know, it was something that you know can happen, but you never want to happen. And I'm not even going to mention what it is here because it's personal. It's for my family. But, you know, going through that was really hard. And so all I can do is be here because there's nothing I could do in that situation to make it better. There was nothing that I could fix as much as I wanted to. Yeah. And so all I could handle was being present and being here. But for you, we missed that back end of being able to spend time in Minnesota. We missed being able to see your family, which I was very sad about as well. Like I yeah. wanted to see everyone. And so it was just such a hard time. And then Dom ended up leaving to go see your family. And that was a part yeah. of my allowance of like, I understand needing family. It was just kind of like... It was, it was really tough to come back home. And so I made a plan to go and surprise my mom. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you're just like, yeah, like, of course I want you to be here with me and be able to, you know, be with me and I'll be sad, but I want you to go be with your family. And so that was really tough. Yeah. Cause I think in a way just, you know, you seeing me there with them and having fun. And I think I even put a post on a story that said something to the extent of like the whole crew's here because it had been so long since I've been with my whole family. That's something where I didn't quite have the awareness of like, Jen's not here. Mm -hmm. So not putting anything on there saying like, minus Jen, you know, sad you can't be with us. Like I'm sitting here. I mean, here. I was going through so many emotions at that time too. <laughs> and so it was like this battle of like, don't control like what he does, like allow, allow, allow. But also the sadness, like, I, I mean, I just had so many triggers. I get FOMO so easily too. Like all my friends will... <laughs> Yeah. No, this so about FOMO me. on top of, of <laughs> like trauma. Yeah, FOMO on top of trauma. FOMO for not being there. FOMO for feeling left out. But then also like the trauma that I'm going through with my family. And like, yeah. it was just all multiplied. And so it was a lot. And so I think like the biggest lesson there for us is we're always going to allow. We're going to allow yeah. our partner to do what feels best for them. So like for me, I'm going to allow him to go to Minnesota, especially if there's nothing he can do here, right? There was no surgeries happening. There was nothing moving forward. So it was nothing that he could do. So yes, I'm going to allow him to go and he's going to allow me to stay and not feel like you have to come with me, Yeah. you know, and, and having that allowance of us as individuals, I think was so pertinent to our own individual needs, but then also having that little awareness of like, okay, I'm going. I had to ask to not be shared within the group text during that time because it was all just laughs and giggles. That's more of like and awareness like, of my family because they kept adding you into. <laughs> I know to group things texts. where I was just like, I'm not happy right now. Like I can cry right now thinking back to like how I felt in that moment because there yeah. was a lot of sadness, and so it's just that awareness of like, if someone's sad, don't like bombard them with all these like I know they were like my <laughs> family was wanting to again again cause because because my family was missing you and wanting yes. to be with you and wanting to make you feel included so yeah. they're just like oh like let's take a picture and send it to Jen and yeah. I just would kind of have to say like uh I let, let's just let her be let her be right <laughs> yeah. now I don't think she wants to get those types of pictures and so yeah that was really tough it's playing with this balance and you have to be able to talk and communicate with your partner not trying to do it in a controlling way but trying to do it in a way of like Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I'm needing. Yeah, which plays right into our, like our third biggest point, which is communication, <laughs> <laughs> like which really is was woven it within those first two points we talked about kind of around the same time we came back home, we were moving into a new house, mm -hmm. right? And we had just gotten this brand new house. And of course, when you start filling a home and creating your space, there's a lot to communicate about. Yeah, a lot of different responsibilities. Totally. And just when you're living with somebody, there's mm -hmm. a lot to communicate about in general. And we, of course, had lived together before but not at a place nearly this big mm -hmm. we were in a one bedroom apartment and it was in a complex where they do some tasks for you or they yeah. might come and do some of the maintenance on the on the apartment for you yeah. which now all fell on us to either do ourselves or delegate out and hire somebody yeah. and just the general day-to-day -day, the laundry the trash the yeah. <laughs> all of the duties that come along with that yeah just making sure that you're communicating again and getting ahead before you know that stress for yourself that's going yeah. to take over. And I think 
Like that would, that's always a big one for us is like, I get crazy cleaning before friends or someone comes over. But she doesn't care if the house is an absolute disaster. <laughs> that is not true. Any other time that is not of our true. living day. <laughs> you, if anyone were to walk in on any other day, they'd be like, oh my God, it's clean. I, and I'm a little OCD when it comes to that, where yes. I would prefer clean countertops in the kitchen at any time. You know? All the time. Yeah. All, like I love when just things are away. It looks clean. It looks nice. And then all of a sudden people are about to come over and Jen's like, we need a clean. <laughs> well, I need it. Like once someone comes over, it's not just like clean. Like I need it immaculate <laughs> when someone comes over. And so like for me, it's like, well, if I want help with that, I really have to communicate the tasks I directly want. Like I can't expect, oh, he's upstairs. He's probably going to make the bed. It's fine. You know, like I. <laughs> I'm getting triggered right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I need to communicate it. And same with him on a day to day task where he wants things like. If I have my my turmeric, put that coffee thing away, or not the coffee, but the, the kettle, the kennel, kennel, <laughs> words, not work guys, <laughs> the kettle, yeah, yeah, the coffee kettle, or just like dishes. Like I'm a type of person where I cook, I eat, and I clean up all the as things as I go. Eating. Like yeah, I, or as you clean, I clean up the pots and pans that I use, and then when I'm done eating, I just walk it over, wash it off, put it away, and sometimes Jen will eat leave it on the counter for a little bit <laughs> go to the couch work a little bit <laughs> and then come back and then come back a little bit later <laughs> eat something else leave that there as well <laughs> no. okay at the end of the night it does get at the, at put the end away, of the night but that's it that's my thing but and that's the that's where my and i get some weird ocd things i think from my dad thanks a lot dad um just if it's if I'm, not done right away well just if i'm walking through the kitchen and yeah. i see a dirty plate and a dirty fork and a, and a cup and i'm just like okay take it clean it put it away just because I, like like I just said, I like the counters clean, especially if I'm going to be cooking later. I don't want dishes to already be in the sink because yeah. then I'll cook and I'll clean those dishes as well. And so that's just something that came up for me. It's just like, I would love if you tried to be more aware of putting that stuff away or cleaning as, you know, as you go, which again, that's, that's my expectation that it gets yes. done in that order. And that's something that I really needed to kind of shut off. Like, okay, that's what I do, but is it really bad or is it hurting anything if she saves all of her dishes until the end of the day? And does them. But that's where I think like coming back to that communication before it happens. So for him, if like if he's walking by it and it's something that is affecting him like mentally, yeah, needs to just say it in that moment. Like yeah. it and needs say, hey, to like, be communicated. Hey, can you remember like just to do this rather than waiting until it boils up and it's something yeah. like you never put this away. Well, because you know? I've got a few more examples that we could. Oh my I'm goodness! Here we go. <laughs> it's become a whole new podcast. <laughs> All right, number four is setting of goals. I mean, it can be very effective for us to change certain behaviors or to get our system and our bodies feeling a certain type of way because of something we know we've been ignoring and we know we want to put more effort towards. So I think definitely go back and listen to that episode because we go into a lot more detail. We ex we give examples of what kind of goals, but just like a broad overview we do our three couple goals and that's like what are we missing this month you know like what can we do to to add into that connection time to make it more intentional like a lot of people will just say oh i'm gonna do a date night okay but what does that look like what does that mean how often what day are you gonna do it are you, you know? going out is it a date night in yeah is it, yeah so i think getting like specific on goals really helped to just connect us in any different area that we were in so yep. like it had to adjust when we went through, through the miscarriage. It, and again, that's where it ebbs and flows and it changes. And without holding on to those expectations, but being aware of the accountability we want to put not only on our individual goals for ourselves, but on our partnership goals, it's been so helpful. And we don't only put it in a book, we put it right on our refrigerator. So everyone walking in gets to see our goals too, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it just but sometimes it helps we have us to write so them much. in code. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so people don't know exactly what <laughs> our partnership goals are, but yeah, we do three partnership goals, and then we also do like the three individual goals, yeah. personal things we want to work on, and three individual business goals, which because we work together essentially is working on the same thing. But um, different. I mean, we different. have different. Tasks. I mean, we have very different tasks, yeah. but I mean, our really our business is integrated. Yes. So. Um, to point one, integrated very much so with our life and our love, but holding each other accountable to that. And were we perfect this month at filling out all of the goals as we normally do? No, but I don't know, we live an imperfect life as humans. And so if you set these goals and 
that's your expectation. I'm going to achieve this. It's going to be a great month. And then you don't achieve any of them or you do very poorly at some of them. That can be really disappointing and set you up to kind of tank after that. It's been a really incredible first year, even through some crises that came up and some challenges along the way outside of anything that we would have ever hoped or expected. But it's all worked out. Yeah. A lot life can throw a lot at you in one short year, which yeah. is crazy. And it makes me super excited for <laughs> all the other years and the <laughs> amount of time that we get to just go at life together and wake up every day and do it all over again. <laughs> Grateful for this woman I get to do this podcast with and live life with and happy anniversary one whole year. <laughs> one year. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Let's do it again. Yes. And again and again and again. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us for a little recap on our first year of marriage. Woo! Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and a few of the things that we learned, there were four points in there that also incorporated so many other little tips and tidbits that we've learned throughout this year. Please subscribe, comment below if you have a partner, if there are ways that you work on things together or some things that you have found throughout marriage or life or love together. Hit the bell so you can get notifications on when we come out with new podcasts and we will see you next time.